Hello and welcome back to another edition of Porky's Podcast. And with me today is undoubtedly one of the finest Australian players of water. Oh my god. Shut up, you. Let me talk. <laughs> Fuck, I gotta read it. Nah, nah, we'll keep going. It's fine. He's a leader of the Poi Soda clan, or as many of you would know them, Repoi. They're an eight-time Hurricane clan, and they've managed the internationals of Cots, where you may remember an extraordinarily impressive run through Cots, where they shocked Flomo with a Summers, Harugamo, and Coins push. Smoke train. Please join me in welcoming Corrupt Penguin. He streams his ranked, ranked adventures on Twitch. Link will be in the description. KP, dude, it's a pleasure. Not bad. A good sign. Not bad. Yeah, this, this will be so unprofessional. <laughs> G'day. Hey, go on. Yeah, going good. Like, it's the most Aussie thing I've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> to start, <laughs> uh, to so start this with, is a new experience to me. I'm sorry. It's, this, this is new to me, too. This is my first time. To start with, I did? have to ask, how does it feel when you heard, how did it feel when you, when you heard Flomo question your Harugamo pick? And to follow up, how satisfying was it when it worked out so perfectly? Yeah, that was like two years ago, but um, well, it was really satisfying. Everyone's questioning, especially on like, when you rewatch the VODs, like say Twitch chat, for example, they would be like, what the fuck are they doing? That's an other meta pick, because everyone's like, that season, especially in COTS, was really Petro heavy, and there's people brought like a Haru. Was like, what? I don't know. It was a, it was a weird sensation, but it was like we we uh, planned that push for like two weeks prior. So, yeah, I, I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that answers the question. But... No, no. I mean, look, any any time that you make Flomo look bizarre, bizarre. That's not a word. Confused, bemused. That'd be pretty cool. Cause like. Isn't he a god? That, I read that on the internet, so he must know everything. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, but um, it's, like, it's, it's a good feeling when someone like questions what you're doing, and then you successfully pull it off, and they're like, oh, that's actually viable. Because like, at that time, they weren't exactly thinking outside the box. Like With, with Kotsi especially, you really have to think outside the box with some strategies. And that was like one of those instances. Because, like, playing to the meta is generally boring, to be honest. Well, for my clan, at least. We, we tend to try to stray away from the meta. Yeah, that's a point we're going to touch on later. Um, so just, as someone that's never played COTS, I've always been curious, what goes into preparing for COTS, and how much time do you start prepping? Uh, <laughs> that is a uh, hard question, but um, generally, but when COTS, as soon as COTS is announced for us, we're automatically in prep phase. So we would, um... We generally get a seed every season, so we generally don't have to play the qualifiers. So we're already making strats for, say, round of 16, round of 8, and then, that, like, round of, what is it, semifinals, etc. But as soon as that, we, from day from day one of it's announced, we're organizing scrims. Like, we normally verse one to two clans a week just to get some strats, like, planned out, and ready to rock, see if they work, test test the waters. There's it, a lot involved in strat, like um, COTS preparation. Like shot callers, like we have three shot callers in COTS. Like we have one main shot caller, but like all of our main shot callers just uh, butt heads for the duration of the prep phase. <laughs> How much homework is done when you're playing in COTS? So you mentioned that you're a seated clan usually. Do you watch the shit out of the first, first couple of days? Yeah, we're always, always, always. So basically we... We look at the clans that are like a direct competition to us. We try to um, follow streams that they're on. So like Vor especially, we we would definitely watch them. And other clans that we see that are like look like direct uh, opponents or competitors. And like we would always just study them. We like sometimes we scrim against them, but then sometimes the scrims aren't really. Uh, I don't know if I should be saying this, but sometimes the scrims aren't as fruitful as you would think because like. So I've, like, I don't want to be that guy, but some clans bring fake strats to scrims just to test the water with what the other clan's doing. So it's a little bit, like, iffy. <laughs> it like be a Spider-Man man. I'm bringing a fake strat, and so are you. Yeah. <laughs> really, we're just wasting each other's time. Yeah, exactly. But so, but that, that comes back to a trust thing when it's uh, scrimming. So, but when we scrim, we generally, uh, I'll be honest, we have, like, half of our strats fake, the other half we're testing. Because, like, you really don't, especially when you're up against a, a clan you're going to verse, you don't want them to get a gist of what exactly you're doing. So we, say we test an A flank, 
and the B flank, but the whole C flank is just a muck around sort of thing, you know. But they still they still play properly, but it's not uh properly. No, not like uh how we want the strat to be exactly. Wow, so you're so you're like testing individual things in the game. You're not just trying. All right, well we we want to do this this. So you play properly one game and then fuck around the next. You're like in individually breaking it down. Yeah. Oh, it's every bit counts in cuts. Like every like little subsection, like every like two ships can change, like make a difference, you know. Because sometimes you can really guess like, how like some maps play out. So like Crash on Alpha, for example, um, you'll see a lot of teams go to the A flank, so you can see how that plays through already. And like a lot of teams would generally do a loose hold at C. Like some maps, you can really read easier than others, but I think that's more of a shot caller mind in yeah. analyzing how the games have been playing out in cuts. So when you're playing in COTS International, as you guys have, can you speak to the feeling when you see like a big name playing on the other side of the bracket, like 407 TWA, for example? Um, I would say not as scared, but you would treat them with as enough respect. Like you don't um, disrespect them at all. Like when you see them, it's like, oh yeah, we're going to beat them sort of thing. You just, you have to like show respect to your, your adversaries, but... Not as like I don't I don't want to speak for my whole team here, but I I personally ain't that scared. I just see them as like shoulder to shoulder, like peers. You know, like some guys have a uh, different methods, and like you got to admire their skill also. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, I've played a little in a server. I must admit, I kind of wet the bed. Oh seven bonks. I played a I played a game of ranked, uh, and the hack over there. And and it was a warlord in the hack opposing me. I was like, oh, for fuck's sakes, why did I do? Um, but I suppose you know you guys are are, hur are many time hurricane clan as well. You know, you guys deserve that same kind of respect. Yeah, there's that. But um, I, I like it's it's a weird feeling, you know. Like it's really hard for me to explain to be honest because I don't really see like I look up to them, but I see them as peers. If that makes sense. Like, I don't really see them as like, oh, yeah, he's going to flog us. I was like, I'd more see it as like a challenge, you know? Yeah, I understand. I get the same feeling when I see Strat on the other side. Yeah, you have a little bit of fear, but like, you got to still like have that courage, you know? If that makes yeah. sense. So, what would winning COTS mean to you? Is is that the end goal? That's where you're at? Oh, yeah, to, to be honest. Like, we've been, even just regionals, you know? I think that's our goal in the clan, just go for regionals well, all we want to do is win at least one regional then we'll be happy like it would, it would mean everything to us we've been like slowly building it up we won one season of clan battles that was like a, like feels good you know like yeah we're, the time spent uh trying to win a cots or like even a clan battle season for that matter it's, it's a lot of sweat and tears like you staying up to like late yeah. spending four hours a night just pushing day in day out and then like the point gain as well for i know i'm going on a little bit of a tangent here but if you're among the top five Hurricane Clans and you're going for points, you're not getting anything, basically. Every win, you're only getting, like, eight points. And then if you do a loss, it's, like, 35. And it's just, like... <laughs> it's really hard to, like, cope, like, sitting there for, like... How many hours are in, let's say, 4, 8, 12? It's, like, 16 hours, right? A week. And if you're pushing in, like, three days out of that and you, like, have too many losses, it's just, like, pain. Like, yeah, it just sort of feels good, though, if you get to the top. Oh, I mean, I must have. You must feel a certain sense of pride every time you sport. Ah. Uh, oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's like yeah, our names on that map feels good, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like the casual play wouldn't give a fuck, but uh, part of my French, I'm not allowed to stream in here. But fine, now you've swore. Throw. Now, now you've swore. It gives me a license. Okay. You know? Yeah, but like <laughs> he did it first. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> So something I'm curious about. In your mind, what's more important in uh, COTS, map pick or spawn? I mean, it might seem like a clear-cut answer, but at a high-level clan such as yourselves, you guys have plans for all maps, right? And you yes, must have we do. preferences on spawns. We... Oh, it's, it's hard, because some maps have really skewed spawns. Like, um... It depends on your strat as well. Like, I generally for us, we prefer the spawn over the map. Well, in some instances, we'll prefer the map. It's a really hard. I can't give you like, uh, like we, we prefer sort of thing because ideally we want to pick both. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, perfect world. Yeah, but uh, some some maps we would prefer to have the spawn, and then some uh, sometimes we just want to pick the map instead of the spawn. Like sometimes we're really confident, think yeah, we can win on both sides, sort of thing. Yeah, I, I can understand. But just before we step away from cots, I want to ask you, and this is your opinion. I don't want you to speak for the clan to get yourself in trouble. But in the last <laughs> cots, there was thirty grand um, USD up for grabs, which on the face of it is tremendous. That does a shitload for our. But what I want to ask you is, do you feel like it could have a negative long-term impact by encouraging these super clans? You know, like, for example, the best players from Vor and Minus 1S create a super clan to go win the 30 grand. Uh, it's not a bad thing, to be honest. Just like, ideally, I can see a Wargamer going for it, and I, going for it and I can support it, to be honest. Like, it's more going towards an esports thing. Like, top players, like, they work their asses off, to be honest. I... I like, they deserve something, in a way, yeah. for me, but the way I look at it. Because the time spent setting up for comp stuff is... And you don't get paid for it at all. It's like... <laughs> it's, a, it's an extra... Um, sorry, I actually hit, hit the mic. Um, I, lost, I lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> it's an extra motivator, in a way. In a way. Cause it's, oh, fuck. Uh, I don't know. Is it? I reckon it's a good thing you know, overall, but that's just my opinion. No, oh, that's fine, man. That's what I'm looking for. Um, so let's get into running a hurricane clan. Sure. Oh no! Yeah, I, I, that was the answer I was expecting. Um, as many of my viewers might be, Ill, you're the the leader of Reploy, one of SCA's best clans. Is there much day to day work, or does it kind of just run itself? Depends. We're, between seasons, we don't really get up too much, I'll be honest. On seasons, there's a lot of work. <laughs> like, there's a lot of personal clashes. Everyone wants to win at the end of the day. That me. But it's true. Yeah. But he said... Yeah, but look, it, every clan has its problems. Our, ours is not void from this. And uh, we just have a little bit, maybe different problems to say another clan as w mm -hmm. would have. So in Repoy, there are a heap of in their own right, stake a claim as one of the best in the world at what they As yeah. a clan leader, how do you manage all of the personalities, or have all the egos kind of just bought in to the clan culture? Oh, no. <laughs> that was a pretty hard question. That's such a baity question, isn't it? That's going in deep. Um, <laughs> look, there, I'll be honest, there is personality clashes. I try to... How do I put it? I don't try to manage it, but like, if there's a fight internally, I try to let it go down without getting involved till someone's feelings get hurt, basically. Because some, sometimes someone needs to like stretch, I mean, throw their weight in to get an opinion across. Because we, like, I'll be honest, we have a lot of big heads because like they're generally good at what they're doing. Like Strat, for example, he's really good. I think he's one of the best CV players on SEA. So, like, if someone challenges him at a CV, he's like, I'm going to, like, not have an opinion just yet yeah. until, like, someone gets offended. Then I'll, like, weigh in. Like, I, I would generally only step in if someone, like, um, feels, like, if, if it's gone too far, essentially. I mean, that makes sense. But there is, like, some personality clashes. I try not to go in too much to it, though. Yeah, no, no. Um, I'm not looking about the clan. Don't start but I'm just, I was just kind of curious. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a hard answer, to be honest. I can't give you a clear-cut one. Yeah. So, you guys have made Hurricane eight times. That's good. Does each time feel as special, or does it reach a point where it's like, yeah, okay, I made Hurricane. Are we going to push the nameplating or no? I'll be honest, that's, <laughs> that's the answer. To me. Like, we, <laughs> we don't really... Same time, it's like, we'll just get to Hurricane, and it's like, yeah, we got Hurricane. Like, it doesn't feel as good anymore to be honest i think the first like couple times was really nice but we, we either make the decision it's uh we either push for name play or just like just muck around like last season for example was a training season for us we're like yeah we'll just get to hurricane and after that we'll just like muck around yeah no i can respect that i mean look as someone that has the highest level i've played is and i must admit getting to hurricane i think i'm gonna cry to be honest yeah. dude first time it's like 
it's it's nice. It's like when I first got Hurricane, I was like, holy shit, yeah. I'm there, I'm there. It's like, a, like it's one of those self accomplishments you'd have, like achievements. It's like oh, I always want this sort of thing. Oh. That's why I said before, I was like connecting to another question you had earlier. Sorry, I'm gonna sneeze one second. All right. <laughs> um, the only like some of us only have a couple co accomplishments left in the game. It's like winning cots for us is one of them, like the left. So that's what we've been striving for. So it's like a hurricane for us is just like, yeah, we just got it sort of thing. It's like, yeah. it's, it's become a usual thing now, you know? Yeah, I, that, that was exactly what I was wondering. But I suppose at that point, you've also got to juggle, well, this person that joined us 30 days ago has never played in a hurricane game. It must be tremendous for them, but, but for you, it's like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, I try, we tried like the guys that have got hurricane like so many times, like our main team guys, just like, yeah. Hurricane, but we try to like temper our um enjoyment. No, 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 that's that's not the word. Um. Oh, la, 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 la. God. Do you try not to play it down so much for the? Yeah, guys? we don't play it down. Yeah, that that's what I'm going for. It's like we still hype it for them, you know. Yeah. Like we had four new guys, and like holy shit, we got Hurricane. It's like yeah, it feels good, man. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like we don't. <laughs> We try not to be those, like, the downers to say this, yeah. like, yeah, it's like our ass time. Well, like, why are you so happy? Sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, I can respect that, though. It makes a lot of sense. So, That's like, yeah. As the leader of a highly successful Hurricane Clan, how do you go about recruiting players? Are you looking for finished, polished products, or are you looking for players with the potential that need to be groomed? So to be honest, we accept from all areas generally what i prefer is i don't want someone fully groomed completely but i want someone who's been there done that like like i'm happy to handhold but i don't want to handhold you as much i try to go for those players where it's like they need a little bit of mentorship and that's it ideally though i kind of want i want someone that's going to challenge my opinion but like the same time respect everyone else's opinions also look how we rarely recruit though to be honest we only like recruit one guy every like two months or like three months but our criteria is varies a lot like we generally accept from referrals from people in the clan but generally i want people to switched on not like i don't know actually this it's our recruitment's pretty broad to be completely honest with you mm -hmm. Like, I'm happy to take that guy that needs a bit of um, time to help, like, get into the comp scene. Like, we have one guy in our clan, especially. He's, he's He only had, like, three tier 10 ships, like, and we only got him in because he was really nice and it was, like, he was an exception. Like, we're happy to make the exceptions, but he needed a lot of time. But as long as he's learning, it's, like, we still get that sense of accomplishment of where, like, hey, we help this guy get to where he is sort of thing. And then he's, like, being better than we are now, so it's, like... Like, I'm happy to take those sort of level of players. Prodigy. Yeah. <laughs> so but Look, at the end of the day, like, we need to help our clan grow. And sometimes it's going to be those guys that have more motivation than us in the game, like the new guys. We're happy to, like, tutor that. So in your mind, what are the main differences playing at a hurricane level compared to, like, Storm, Typhoon? individual mistakes i would say they're more focused on like one guy messing up a trade really badly or a push going horribly not normally i would say it's i don't want to dial it down to two problems but generally what i've found it's two problems it's either shot caller error like making a wrong decision at the wrong time or to uh players being uncomfortable in their ship and not knowing how to react essentially one thing I find really different, though, um, I know this is a different point, but I, some, so I don't know, like, I really want to expand on this because some players really need shot caller mentorship at the time to like mm -hmm. do something. I really like players that know, like, see your situation, see the shot caller is like busy. You, they make an analysis of them, themselves and then act without the shot caller doing something. Like. Even just asking the shot caller at that time, it's like I think that's a big thing. Some people, some players just wait for the shot caller to say something, and then they just lose the match, even yeah. though they could have done something. 
like a ha, have a voice essentially if you see something's going on and then you made a better analysis on that side of the map let them do it like go for it actually it ties in really nicely with the question about the importance of autonomy within the clan battles oh, dude is it i think autonomy is one of the most important things like every player should understand the strat and how it's implement like how it supposed to play out and then they should be able to act on uh seeing something so say if someone's kiting on the other flank there's like yeah i'm not gonna like push into that like they should be able to like analyze that without asking the shot caller like at the same time the shot caller is pretty flustered he has to play his own ship at the same time he's already making decisions so I was, I, look i know this is i'm going into pet peeves now but I really hate it when people like question the shot caller. It's like, yes, I, I know how this is going to play out. It's like, just listen to orders. If if something uh, doesn't go to play, it's the shot caller's fault. If he makes a bad call, that's on him. Like, if I make a bad decision, blame me. Don't blame you. Blame me. <laughs> yeah, that's what's like. I really think autonomy is important, but also following orders is also important. Because it's finding a happy balance. Yeah. So, uh, no, go on, go on. I'll just say with autonomy as well, it's like when you put players, like there's sometimes there's some strats where you just put two players on a flank together, they should work together without actually needing the shot caller at all. Like a loose flank, for example, if you have two ships holding a, say like a kiting flank, they, they should be able to work to, with one another with full autonomy without being needed to be shot called or whatever. Our, our clan's shot calling works a little bit different though to every other clan's. Our, our clan generally only calls out focus fire. Well, the shot call only focus, uh, calls for focus fires, pushes, um, kites. That's about it. Yeah. But oh, there's a, li a little bit more to that. And there's a, that's a little bit of a uh, too much of a summary, but <laughs> yeah. You know, I think I understand. So just touching on your point about find that you pair certain players up so you pair yourself and xyz or do you guys play off have good chemistry or yeah is it just ship composition that's exactly it depends in co uh clan battles i've just let people go to the flank which wherever they spawn because spawns are generally important but cods for example you would always pair players that are really good together like junior and i we're like he's one of our um better cruiser players in the clan Oh, sorry, so that's rude to say. Let me uh, rephrase that. He's one of our um, really good cruiser players. Um, and then I, for COTS, I either play cruisers or DDs, and Junior and I play, have a lot of synergy together. So then he generally, if I'm going to smoke, like he knows I'm going to smoke, he generally doesn't have to ask for it. He's normally there with me at every moment. Like we can go to areas, like we can read each other sort of thing. That's why it's really important to have like those autonomy flanks, for example, have two guys that have like really good synergy with one another. So they can guess what each other are doing before it actually happens. So they can like prep. So if they're going to die together, I mean, if they're going to push in together, they're generally going to die together sort of thing. But they, they know that. They, they'll they normally accomplish something between that time, though. So it's not. <laughs> in random, <laughs> that's probably the case, but <laughs> <you can't>, no. <laughs> um, so during the first clan battle scene, I believe it was C. Repoy went on a massive win. Many people surprised it was a battleship. <laughs> Widely accepted aircraft carrier. So, to me, that's uh, incredibly surprising considering the complement of players. You My question is what the f? Look, imagine that was... abandoning TV. That season, I. Look, there's two reasons why I prefer battleship comps. One, the stress that CV comps have on the comp team to not fuck up is too hard. Like the, the wargaming really don't know the stress behind how how to uh, fight at that top tier, and then dealing with CVs constantly spotting and bombing and all that sort of thing. And then secondly, our players play better in surface ships, so I made a comp around the battleship to get that get the ball rolling. I think we played like. Like 300 battles that season. We got like 410 points on Hurricane. Look, that doesn't sound like much, but that is actually a tall feat because if you're gaining like eight points, imagine a Hurricane. That's a long way to get to 400, a long way to go for 400 points. Look, at that moment, at the time, I, I sort of, at, when CV's got introduced, 
I was skeptical, as you should be with every new thing in the game. You can't be like just like fuck, fuck. I don't want that in the game. You got to be like open minded. <laughs> but um, I've to cater towards my clan needs and how how we operate better. So I I went for a more battleship comp, even though we have phenomenal CV players. Like I'm, <laughs> I feel bad for doing that that season, but our strengths weren't the CV that season. Also, when I was making a strat that season, I the weakness, like, Venezia's were extremely popular that season, and you saw, like, three three to six of them. You'd see, like, one hack and six vents, and I was like, fuck it. Do you know what stops this? <laughs> six Stalingrad to the Kremlin. <laughs> and I was like, what, what are Venn's good at? Kiting and uh, playing for time. And then I have made a strat exactly for countering that. And it's, the reason why it worked so well that season is because everyone was doing the Venezia's. If, if, like, the only way you're stopping a big push was a battleship... This is what I was really against with wargaming, adding two capital ships in clan battles, because it really stopped my battleship comps. Like, I really want to do either have a CV or a battleship. That's it. I don't want to have a battleship and a CV, because, like, pushing strats go out the window if you have a battleship and a CV, because yeah. you got to play with a more stagnant gameplay. Like, I, I really thought Season 9 was a really dynamic season because of that, because some teams have opted for the battleship, so you could do more pushing and uh, aggression sort of strats. Some other teams opted for the CV and they went for more of the kiting, play for time sort of thing. Like grab two caps, play for time. Like I think that season had the most diversity. And the last, I'll be honest. Like I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if this plays into another one of your questions later, but um, the current seasons have been really like stagnant for us. Like the last three seasons have been boring as hell, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that last tier nine season was the most fun we've had, but That's any other so tier ten season has been um pretty boring to, for us because it's just the same. It's just yeah. like Goliaths, Venezia's, or... And then there's just the one battleship holding. It's not... It's not diverse. Like, the ship selection's diverse, but the strategies aren't. That's what my really big gripe... I don't want to... Oh, sorry, I'm, like, fucking going in, like on a tangent here, but... It's like, no, it's good, man. It's good. Keep talking. <clears throat> I really hate how a lot of clan battles have diverse into the same strat, and then there's everyone just copies it, and it's just them playing for... It's not the best strategy anymore. It's more about who can... Out trade each other. I don't like that's as boring as hell, you know. Yeah. Like I, I want to win via a strategy, not out trading. Out trading becomes boring as hell. Like honestly, yeah. every match you go in, load in, and it's like, oh, go here, go there, just the usual fellas, and then we'll just uh, try to out trade them. It's just re yeah, it relies too heavily on player skill, and they're like that's a really bad learning environment for new players. That's why I really like. I get some satisfaction out of teaching new players in the game. And like helping them grow, but this sort of like trading thing does not like um, is is not forgiving for players getting into clan battles. It's it's I'd prefer it of a more strat advantage, and then they can slowly build up their own player skill through the trading, whilst well, having a strat advantage. Well, I mean, let's take a moment to feel sorry for all of those um poor Drake players who are ground up, got their first tier nine, super excited, can go join clan battles. And then gets burned down in three and a half minutes by four Mogadors. It's just yeah, exactly. a moment of silence, please. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that strat was extremely fun, but uh, like, I, I prefer strats like that, you know. I like beating, I get a satisfaction out of beating someone through strat advantage instead of player skill advantage. Yeah. Yeah. It's more like fun for the players in your team as well, because you're doing something unique. That's what I really like. The older clan battles, you could bring something unique to the table and make it work. It's like that's why I really love season nine, where we did the Kremlin and the Stalingrad. We were no other team did that. We were the only team that did that, and it was like it was catered to us, our, our clan exactly. And we we moved to the top with that strategy, which I was really happy about. Also, even like the the Mogador strat we used, like a lot of clans picked that up though, and they brought counters to it. But it's like that that sort of strategy like really like brings my enjoyment and fulfillment for clan battles, but. As of late, recently, I've lost that passion slowly because every strategy has just sort of been the same in clan battles. And if you don't bring this X, X, Y, Z ship, you're, you've lost. So, um, anyone that knows you personally knows you're a big fan of the French DD comps, abusing their speed and fluidity. What is it about the Klebs and Marceaux that makes them so attractive as a strat planner? <laughs> One, mobility. is because they can be anywhere at any time, basically. And second, just... Uh, Making people suffer at range or up close. You're going to make them suffer from a YOLO or just farming them down to death because they're struggling to hit the thing. <laughs> yeah. 
you do a little bit of stoppy starties and you're like, uh, <laughs> they get frustrated at aiming at you, <laughs> essentially. Stoppy starties. To be fair also, the saturation is a bit balked, I'll be honest. You basically got like 35k of effective HP. Yeah, nearly yeah. 40k. Yeah. They say Elbing is the tankiest destroyer. I think they're lying. <laughs> yeah, insert club and Marso. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look, it doesn't matter if you don't have a heal. You can just speed duke. Yeah. Look, look, you don't need to heal if you don't get hit. Big brain. Exactly. <laughs> Are we actually the two greediest players in the world, or no? I'm, I'm extremely greedy in destroyers. Do you know I, think I, I don't want to go into it, but like... <laughs> but most of my small and stats are just me farming. <laughs> I just got on like leaderboard by farming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I was talking to a certain well, Wow CC, and he told me, "Porky, you are the greediest player I've ever seen." I was like, "What do you mean?" He goes, "You are the greediest. You're on 200 health and you're firing. Stop. Right. Go <laughs> I've got, <laughs> I've got DD mains in my clan that shoot on fucking like 90 HP. It's like, <laughs> stop shooting, man. We're trying to win the game. Why are you shooting?" <laughs> Yeah, they're still padding their stats, bro. What are you talking about? It's like fucking clan battles. Relax, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's no leaderboard for clan battles, bro. Uh, yeah, exactly. He's like, <laughs> where did your damage numbers come into this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, tangent there. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, So I've heard many schools of thought about the role of the aircraft carry in the clan battles environment. Oh, God, that's such a bad call. I can feel the hatred being written, like keyboards breaking. Um, some people say they're just spotting slaves. Other people say they're flying battleships with speed and efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> and others say they just don't belong and fuck off. What's your take? <laughs> they can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh... Seriously, though, on a serious note, they're, uh, for me personally, my opinion, they're a damage class. They shouldn't be focusing on spotting. They do nonchalant spotting, but at the same time, they, uh, most, most of their influence comes from damage, like yeah. b big hits, like, like, say, battleship pushes, for example. You can, like, do a triple sit, and that, like, cucks a battleship push. Yeah. Like, t two triple sits gone. That's, like, the battleship's, like, oh. half his HP gone, for example. What's well, 40k just gone? That's the, the biggest problem with aircraft carriers in clan battles. I don't know if this is one of your questions later, but it's it's the spotting that they allow. It's the uh, I really hate how the the fighters that they get are, are spotting. They should start with interceptors. They should pay the fucking three points to get the spotting planes. I mean, fighters. I know not all CV players will agree with me on this, but I think the spotting kills a lot of strategies and diversity of how to play in clan battles. Yeah, that makes me feel really smart because I suggested the same thing to us can't. So to have someone that's way better than me suggest the same thing, I feel pretty smart. <laughs> Not going to lie. So um, we'll just touch on CVs more. We'll expand. Do you think CVs have negatively or positively impacted the clan battles environment? And can you explain why? I, I got a lot of... Like, I can... So many angles I can approach this, but at the same time, I feel... It, it has both positive and negatives. More, like, for me personally, I feel like it's negative. It adds more diversity. Oh, not really, actually. As a strat maker, I hate it. it it's not forgiving at all. At, at all. If you want to teach new players how to get into clan battles, CVs don't allow that. It's just, it's like, yep, just go here. Out trade, hold this position. Sort of thing. It's like, as much as I like playing the class myself, I don't feel like they have a place in a 7v7, personally. Yeah. Add too many negatives. Yeah, well, I mean, AA is not balanced for 7v7. Yeah, CVs are inherently balanced for 12v12s and not for 7v7s. Yeah, I know plane yeah. losses can be extremely high in clan battles, but that's due to the youth, like, forcing attacks because you do like, you need that damage done then and there. Yeah. But yeah. I don't mind CVs if there's no battleship. So you got to pick between either CV or battleship because I... It allows for a little bit more diversity in, like, ship selection. So, like, one capital ship, the rest, just whatever. Yeah. yeah. That, and battleships and CVs would be the, the one capital ship. But besides yeah. that, I, I personally prefer no CVs in clan battles. Unless, unless it's the one CV or battleship. Yeah. 
So then what's your thoughts on hybrids potentially coming up in tier six with the Issei? Uh, I'm pretty open-minded. I don't have an opinion just yet. I, I'm still a non to its uh, combat efficiency in clan battles because mm. I haven't seen it yet. I, I personally haven't got it myself, so I can't really formulate an opinion about it. So, Yeah, yeah. I can't go too deep into it. Well, let's talk a little bit about the upcoming Clan Battles event. How do you feel two CVs will affect the 7v7 format? And as a follow-up question, do you feel like this is a sign of things to come? <laughs> um, I personally don't want CV. Do, do, one CV is enough. I know Wargaming think these mystical thing of CVs have a supporting role at Tier 6. Which they obviously don't. Like, last tier 6 season, they obviously were doing damage, despite... I know they were up against, like, Grass Bays and, um... What was it? Huang Hayes? Huang Hayes and Perth. Yep. Like, they weren't doing damage against those smoke comps, but at the same time, it's just that... I don't see the supporting role at tier 6. I, I, there should only be one CV max. I can see what they're going for. They're testing the waters. They normally test the waters at tier 6. But at the same time, it's, it's not fun. I think, like... Uh, yeah. I don't want to be that rude guy, but Wargaming don't play at Typhoon and up. They probably just have a muck around and fucking storm and that's it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, I mean, the game isn't inherently balanced for the top echelon of players. It's yeah. for the average Jomic 45%. Don't want to stat shame, but as a, as a, as a general term, the Jomic 45% Sorry. who headbutts every rock in the game and doesn't know how to shoot. So, you know, like, when you, when you start talking about seconds, balance inherently goes out the window. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not balanced from the top, so I can't really complain too much, because I know, I, I know Wargaming enough to know that I shouldn't, like, i got to be really open-minded, so my opinion is really... <laughs> I, I feel like they value my opinion, but at the same time, they don't, they don't do it as much. Like, yeah, they don't they... do it from the top, so I can't really. Yeah. I I think that it's, it's fine for them to test the waters, but at the same time, I I don't see how it's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we're a competitive clan. I know what competitive means. It's like, we got to push for the top sort of thing, but at the same time, it's got to be fun. You got, there's yeah. got to be some enjoyment. There's no enjoyment in versing two CVs, like doing smoke comms all the time. Like, that's not fun. Like, am I in a... In a me, one just wants me to push aggressively. <laughs> so I'm like that ape that's like, yeah, fuck yeah, two minutes push in, win the game sort of thing. Yeah. But I, CV, dual CV inherently goes for a, a more, what's the word? Um, kiting comp? I, don't, I forgot the word I normally would call it, but it's, um, you'd kite more in it. Mm -hmm. I forgot, there's a special word for it. I forgot. I used to use it a lot. Oh, it's a more reactive strat. There we go. Yeah. Instead of a proactive strat. I personally lean towards proactive strats using dual CVs as more of a reactive strat. Is that because you're an ape and like to push in? Yep. Okay. It's, it's just as long as I know what we're doing here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> do, do you think that's why you like the Mog Cleb Marceau thing? Because you can just oh, yeah. run at them? Exactly. And then they're extremely reactive as well. Yeah. Like they're both proactive and reactive. So you can just like run around and be a moron. Then change flank if you needed. They're really forgiving, to be completely honest. Yeah. Unless you, like, really, really fuck up. Yeah. So does that mean Paolo Emilio is your most played boat? Unfortunately, not. I actually haven't played a single game in Paolo Emilio, unless you count test ships. Nah, I don't think about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like we've got to get you that Paolo, dude. I know. I should, like, I'm too lazy to grind for it, to be honest. I just like, oh, I'm going to get a vampire. And then I just like, oh, I can't be fucked grinding vampire. <laughs> yeah, I know. It broke my heart when it came out as we should be a point. I was like, I wish it would be like free XP at the same time. I was like, God damn it. Yeah. Research Bureau. Because it's like, I had about 200k coal and about 20k steel. And I was like, you know, I can kind of get anything at this point. Almost. You know, just don't come out as research Bureau points. Just don't. So <laughs> then it comes out as research Bureau points. I, I really hate Research Bureau in, in some instances. I really wish Legend Mods were still a part of, like, grinding the Tier 10, you know? Not 
Bloody reset your line three times and then you get it. Well, I don't want to be that guy. But remember when Wargaming said research bureau, um, legendary mods would stay as a mission forever? Yeah. <laughs> For forever, quote unquote. <laughs> forever ever? Do you also remember the poll they did about research bureau points? 90% of people said no. Yes. That's anyway, what I, uh... <laughs> Imagine being against Wargaming. <laughs> let's not be those guys. <laughs> so I asked my previous guest this question and I'm keen to hear your take as not a CV main as you've lamented many times on your stream. Yep. How do you feel the rocket attack how do you feel the change to the rocket attack planes has affected the relationship between CVs and DDs? I think it's definitely a positive. It like in the long run it's a positive. Like new new players it's it's normally like a feedback loop, you know? It, and I'll be honest, rockets are extremely overpowered against DDs because they're doing spotting and doing damage at the same time because you would hover a DD, right? I think the only DD that could stop this was Holland. Not even Marso or like any other AA monster can stop this. Even Grozovoy can't stop this. So basically they get spotted. Grozovoy can't stop two attacks, by the way, on CVs. I'm mean, on rockets if you're up against the right CV. But like Shokek, for example, you're doing like 10k to DDs, you know? But it's like every other class, you have to give lead. So it's it's fair. Like in the long run, it's fair. I know I've seen, I've seen the stats. I know a lot of CV players complain. It's like, oh, my job is to kill DDs all game. Your job is not to attack DDs all game. Legit. Right. Like I, I'm not a CV main, but at the same time, you don't attack DDs all the time. All right. And so like, are, you, are you all listening, you 45% apes? Oh my listen. God. <laughs> listen. Listen to what a real CV player is saying. Don't listen to me. I'm a blue CV player. He's a deep purple CV player. Can you just say what you said again, please? <laughs> you, you, your job in CVs is not to attack DDs. To find other targets. You have, like, all the targets out there in the world. Like, you only attack DDs if they're doing influential jobs. That's either capping or farming down teammates or, like, destroying teammates with torps. That's the only time you, like, deal with them. Yeah. Their job is not to hunt DDs for, like, fucking 10 minutes. Like, honestly, they're still more combat effective than others. Yeah. Well, that's it. At, a, at 100 HP, how effective is a Shimikaze? Exactly. Yeah. Look, See, a good CV player can still do, like, 3k a drop, you know? Like, there's, there's counterplay there, but I think I watched your podcast with uh, Ashkans. He was saying that um, a good C a DD player could mitigate damage against a good CV player with rockets. Yes, which is true. But at the same time, it's... um. Against like a player that doesn't know how to counter it, like he's he's right. He's you're not doing any like you're doing a lot of damage against a player that doesn't know how to counter uh, rockets. Yeah, like some DDs, right? For example, they leave the AA on to give you the full like drop, like the like six kilometers. I think is on average is the um the DD AA range. If they leave the AA on, you don't even like need to like line it up properly. Or you don't need like because generally speaking, when you're up against a good DD player, you got to fly over them once, like then turn around and drop them. Unless there's a radar sort of thing. But yeah, against bad DD players, I don't want to like single them out, but turn your AA off if you want to get do dropped. I mean, we've all, we've all come across that, that certain Shimmer player that's left his AA on, his zero AA on. Yeah. And he gets <laughs> dropped and then, then complains. Gets... It's like, just leave your AA off, man. And then he yeah, probably might just dodge you. Yeah, homeboys just died on purpose. What really frustrates me is, I don't know, I'm on a tangent, but... um, That's fine. When, I, when I'm in a CV and the DD leaves his AA on, I get so frustrated. It's like, just leave your AA off. If you leave your AA on, I'm going to drop you next drop. <laughs> Do you have a type, type back in? You should type to them in all chat. That's one chance. Yep. Turn it off. Because sometimes they just frustrate you. It's like, I just want to drop this guy. It's like, you're in the way, man. Just turn your AA on. Yeah. <laughs> That's my greedy me talking. <laughs> I mean, look, I've always said, and look, I'm a blue CV player. I, got, I don't really have a platform to speak on, but I'll humbly say, my argument has always been, why the fuck would I waste five minutes going after a destroyer? At most, I'll get 34k, when in five minutes, I can dev strike a battleship. That is so inefficient. Why would I bother? Exactly. Maybe that's just me being greedy. I know. I'd rather go for the surface ships. Yeah. That's the problem with the rocket nerf. I will add, TVs tend to go for more cruisers and battleships now, which is good and bad thing. Depends how you look at it, but... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the wargaming can't win. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they, but to be honest, they kind of dug themselves a hole with aircraft carriers. Yeah, because they're they're pain in the ass to counter. 
like you got to do things that are like grouping up and like i'm more of a believer like in this game you can't rely on teammates all the time like, let, let's be honest your average random game ha how many of your teammates can you rely on you got to do things by yourself cvs don't allow you to do things by yourself i just rely on my div division mates yeah and even the game... i don't really <laughs> maybe the I'm game just greedy. In... game forces you to div in a, in a sense to get yeah, wins yeah. if you're like really competitive yeah we care about leaderboards and shit yeah yeah so uh, i know your answer so i've 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 written in a uh, a counter to it but map depending map depending can you give our listeners a prediction on what an early clan battles meta at tier 6 with two cvs could look like map depending map depending uh so did you want ship lineups or yeah yeah just just a just a rough overview do you think smoke comps eagle spam to me, um, it'd just be like last season. There would be like a lot of Huang Hayes, like double Huang Hayes on each flank. So that'll be four ships already gone. Yeah. And then it'll be a DD, generally speaking. So T61, a fusion, that sort of jam, like quick, quick burst smokes. Mm -hmm. And also, it will either be one C CV and a battleship that may range from Raja or Lowenheart. And the battleship may be a hybrid, but uh, generally a overmatched battleship. So like yeah. war spite, that sort of thing. Yeah. Or it would be double CV, which would be either I know CV sniping will be like prevalent in the first early days of uh clan battles, but I feel like it would be countered really easily after that. Like people once they're aware, they'll be countering. So they I think double CVs will either be right double Rajo or Rajo and a low and heart. Yeah. That's yeah. my general lineup so far. Maybe I can see double battleship comp working, like maybe double Ishmael and like Pepsi Colas and Huang Hei pushes. Yeah. Also, there's a, another tier six ship, the um Indian ship. I forgot it's called the. Uh, it's it's basically a Fiji minus one turret. I forgot the, the name Mysore. of the ship. Yeah, the Mysore. That may be come into meta, but Wait, that's so, some experimenting I've got to do in my clan it's before I. Rough DPM. It's like ten seconds on the guns. Yeah, wow. but nothing's really that high at that tier, though. Let's be honest. Yeah. Must be what's hung what's what's Huang Hei? It's like five or six, I think. No, it's low I mean longer than that. I think it's eight seconds on the reload. Yeah. That's seven, I eight. suppose if you spec for top grade gunner, senior smoke. Yeah, this is pretty nice. Yeah, I, I, that's what I would think so far yeah. would be going on. So nothing too special. What do you think something you feel will be the most common issue shot callers will run into facing two CVs. Biggest issue, um, how to deal with smokes. And also, so basically dealing with the double Kwang Hei, like a lot of shot callers, like new shot callers, need to understand that CVs can't, like, push, dual CV can't push these guys out of smokes when their smoke's already moving, you know? Mm -hmm. They got double the smoke. CVs can't keep dropping that. It's extremely expensive to keep dropping double Kwang Hei as well. Yeah. So a lot of truck callers need to understand as well. TVs don't have an infinite amount of aircraft. I know that a lot of it's oh. advertised that they do, but it adds up. Every plane loss adds up if they're dropping like AA blobs and not getting hits. Every drop has to be worth something. Wait, we don't have infinite aircraft? No, I, I missed the memo. I wish, <laughs> wish my FDR had more aircraft if it had an infinite amount of aircraft. Someone sent me a raven and in it had a scroll that said we did have infinite planes. Pretty sure it's correct. Maybe. I don't know where you get your information then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, look, I get my World of Warship opinions on Reddit. Not, not bad. Original. <laughs> I'm not original. I'm just a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> Teach their own. <laughs> yeah. So do you think the jump between Typhoon, Typhoon and Hurricane is as big as it feels? Like, for me personally, only being have been a part of two actual typhoon pushes. Hurricane feels like like another Everest. As someone that's been there and done that quite a number of times, I, th I feel like you're pretty well qualified to speak on the difference between the quality of play between typhoon and hurricane. Can you just elaborate on that a little? I feel like there's a very big leap between... It, it, it is and it isn't. You, generally, hurricane teams have more consistency and... Uh... I don't know how to answer this without sounding like a cunt. Sorry for my part of my French. Wow. No, that's okay. That's how we say hello in Australia. Yeah. Sorry for any other viewers that aren't Aussie. <laughs> I'm a bit of a potty mouth. 
but uh I, I look I I would just say there's a, a jump between you, there's just more consistency between the leagues. Hurricane teams can perform at a high level. Yeah. With with better consistencies. There, thing... there is there is a leap, but it's n I don't feel it's as big as you would think. Yeah. One thing I've noticed playing at a high storm, low typhoon clan battles is the emphasis on caps and positioning, the shift between that like the shift between caps and positioning and kills. Um, my question is, is that prevalent at a hurricane level or is it a whole nother kettle of fish? It depends on, look, it's, it's comp dependent. Some comps will depend more heavily on caps. Some will depend more on kill. It, it's really comp dependent to be honest. Yeah. I, I don't want to give a decisive answer, but cause I know some of my comps just don't even give a, like, don't even care about caps at all. They just, they just go for kills. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> like my season nine comp was like, yep, we don't need any caps at all. We just need at least. Like, just go, go for kills. That's all we need, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, let them kite. We execute them at the border. Yeah, that, exactly. <laughs> I heard um, I heard Strat say that verbatim on a, another World of Warships podcast. <laughs> yeah, that, that was exactly my Strat for the... I think that season as well, we had like an 80% win rate. Yeah, that's just ridiculous, dude. It blows my mind. Yeah. That, oh, my goodness. Um, I remember when we first quote unquote met finger quotes met, I was in another clan in its first push to Typhoon and you made a comment after the first night of playing with us back at a storm level, you, how you really enjoyed playing back at a storm level with a more aggressive and relaxed play with a less emphasis on ship loss. Can you elaborate to that at all? Ah, uh, that's, um, <laughs> Look, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, Hurricane demands or well, it's Typhoon and Hurricane demands more, uh, more focus on your own play. It's, that's, that's like that's why I like going back to delving into Storm every now and then because it's it's a more relaxed environment. Because I'm not gonna like shit on your clan, but it's a more casual environment. Because I my clan generally is a full competitive. Yeah. Like every loss hits hard. You guys don't really care about one loss because you you're used to it in a, in a way. I don't, like don't want to be rude, but. No, no, dude. Uh, my, my clan's a little bit more focused like they uh the losses kind of hit them harder because <laughs> think, like think about what you've just said my clan who was in storm isn't going to get as fast as an eight-time hurricane clan yeah that makes sense like exactly no, like it's, it's not rude like, it makes sense it's because they you basically expected to win a lot more in a hurricane clan so if you feel like so you have like 10 losses in one night. We're going to be like fucking rage quitting on the third loss, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, at that point, it doesn't make sense to push any further, does it? Because... Yeah. Because like, it's, it's progress gone, you know? Mm -hmm. And ideally, you want to go further. But like, this comes back to where, where I came from in World of Warships. Like, I don't know, like go into my like personal uh, development in the game. But I, I came from just the shitter clan, you know? I came from your average squall clan. I didn't give a fuck about anyone above me. I just wanted to muck around and have a bit of fun. And that, that was like, that's, that's really important to me personally. I remember my roots. I, I don't want to forget where I came from. It's like, I'm used to losing, you know, I, I've been in teams where we would have 45% win rates. Like if you look at my like season three clan battle win rate, it was like 43%. Like I, I know the struggles of, I like to think I know the struggles of like storm teams. Yeah. So I can sympathize with that more. And I, I miss it in a way because it's a really relaxed environment without everyone chewing each other out. Like, I, I found that losses are more, uh, what's it, more, more aggressive. Like, uh, as the night goes off, people get more and more angry at losses. Because, like, yeah. at the end of the time, I can see where people are coming from and more the comp environment. They want to get wins without, um, it, it, in the less stressful and, like, losses that causes stress. Because you're just there to get, like, either steal or just push ratings. And you're going to get angry if you're not, like, accomplishing it. Like, you want to accomplish goals, essentially. And if you're not accomplishing the goals, you can get angry. That's why, like, casual clans they are not really... The goals aren't exactly set, if that makes sense. Yeah. Or, like, the goal is reach Storm, reach Typhoon. Yeah, like, the bar isn't that high. high. So the stress isn't there, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. So let's step away from Corrupt Penguin, the World of Warships savant, the prodigy, the kid. Oh, my God. Let <laughs> Let's talk about KP, the, the streamer. How did you get into streaming? 
I'll be honest, uh, <laughs> a couple of guys just said to me, just get into stream, and I was like, alright. Was it me abusing I... using you for weeks? Yes, basically, but, um... We did it. I, I didn't actually want to get into streaming, to be honest. I, uh, I was like, ugh, ugh. like, so it's like, ugh, yuck streaming, you know? <laughs> I don't, I don't mind it now, though, because it's just, I was like, I play a lot of Warships anyway, so I was like, I may as well just do streaming at the same time. So I ended yeah. up just streaming my rank adventures, and that's about it, to be honest. Yeah. I can't really expand on that any further, to be honest. No, no, that's fine, dude. Um, so anyway, we've been at this for like an hour and a half. Really? <laughs> yeah, dude, we're suffering. Fucking hell. <laughs> Time zone jet lagged. We're dead. Yeah. Um, I'll just give you a chance to, to plug your stream. Tell us when and where and how we can check you out. Oh, I stream every Mondays and Fridays, generally speaking. Depends if I'm lazy or not. Between uh, 8 p.m. and to an undisclosed amount of time. In the afternoon on AEST, that's uh, plus 10, if anyone was interested in watching some ranked gameplay. I don't do as much ranked gameplay as recent. I'm doing CV gameplay, if anyone's interested in watching some CVs. I'm not a CV main, by the way. But he learned from the best, so... Yes. Yeah. So if you <laughs> want to watch some uh, riveting gameplay with either ranked or CVs, Look, you can catch me on Monday If you want to watch 40% Friday. of Strat Mania, go check out KP. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not even bad. an insult, though? No, nah, hold on. <laughs> I think it was a compliment. Just take it, bro. Just take it. All right, my friend. I think I'll I'll let you go. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Please like, subscribe, and share this video to your dog because KP loves his dog. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe to Porky. By the way, every the bit ball. counts. He did it. He did it. <laughs> so KP's links will be in the description, and also I stream as well. I'm a thing. So go do the thing with the stuff. All right, I think we're done.